Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video. Isn't that the biblical interpretation of marriage, which is what we're abiding by here when we're talking about homosexuality yes. also? Okay, so yes. if we're going to apply the same standards, then you would concede that atheists getting married to atheists is a sin? I just want to get that on record. No, I... I Okay, I'm I'm getting confused. What's up? Hello. How you doing? Okay, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um so I want to debate you said in 2020 that homosexuality wasn't a sin and I want to debate you about that. Okay. Okay. So, first, it says here, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 9 to 10, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? I'm do familiar with all the verses, buddy. I, okay. I, know, I know that on the surface... It looks like it's condemning but homosexuality. Let's, I, let's, I know the, that. The, the, word, the word for homosexuality is arsenopoietes. I don't know how to pronounce it. I know what that. It's, I know what you're talking about, and it okay. was a very unique word. And that also that word is translated to sodomites. It might be translated that way. I'm gonna pull up my uh, the um thing that I always reference here because okay. admittedly this I don't have this all at the top of my head at the moment. Okay. Um. Because they actually address this specific verse that you're talking about. Um, oh, there's more verses. Oh, I know. They go through all of them. Um, and this is like written by a pastor because, I mean, I'm not religious myself anymore. So I kind of, do you not know that the wrongdoers will inherit the king? Okay. In, the, in this passage, Paul lists several types of people he regards as sinful. And there are two words in the original Greek text that are relevant here. All right. What you just talked about. Arsen katoi. I can never say it right either. Many people do not realize that the Bible does not contain a word equivalent to our English word homosexual. The concept of homosexuality in the sense of sexual orientation or in the context of a caring relationship towards others was unknown in the ancient world. Instead, this 1 Corinthians list of vices includes words that reflect sexual roles that were part of male behavior in the culture of the first century. So the second word that they talk about here is malakoi, malakoi which means soft. And it could be translated as male prostitutes. So it might not even be condemnation of uh, people engaging in like loving homosexual relationships, but rather um, engaging in like prostitution. There were a lot of temple prostitutes then uh, that Paul was condemning. So I, I don't see where that is. I am looking at the interlinear Bible, which translates through the, Greek, the uh, original Greek directly to English. And the original word it uses is arsenokletus. I understand, but you have to understand that that I, I understand that, that it's it's translated by the ambiguous term sodomites or whatever. But that word is actually up for debate on if it actually means sodomites or not. For well, example, the word arson contotis, the ones that, that, that I'm not able to say, it's super rare in the Bible. And the the uh, um, there's a Greek word that's not found anywhere anywhere else in Greek literature. That word was not found anywhere else in Greek literature prior to uh, the first century. So, well, what? Why would Paul be talking about the Sodomites when the Sodomites died thousands of years ago? What do you mean when the Sodomites died thousands of years ago? When God's Paul Paul is talking about the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God killed those people thousands of years ago. Why would Paul be talking about them? Now? Oh, well, if you want to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, if you want to yeah. go look at that verse, you'll see that what this was was like hedonism, individuals that were not homosexual engaging in acts of sodomy in order to humiliate and degrade and rape their prisoners. For example, uh, that part with Sodom and Gomorrah, you'll see the angels come down and— um, I think that the, I don't remember the exact full story there, but I think that they I were do. going to beat the or rape the angels or something, the, right? The angels came down in the form of men, and the, right, uh, and they Sodomites were first said, offered, and the the sodomites were first offered their daughters 
but they didn't want them. And they said, no, they want the men because they wanted to degrade them and they, humiliate yeah. them. This was like a barbaric, they, they disgusting, ri like way to degrade people. This was not like a consensual, loving, homosexual relationship. So, they, no, yeah, they that's them. what they wanted to rape them. I know they did. Yes. It was, it, you'll, you'll notice that in the Bible, throughout the Bible, right? Anytime that we have, like, the verses seem to reference he uh, homosexual behavior or whatever, it's usually within the context of coercion or rape or abuse. It's never actually referring to loving homosexual relationships because, like, the Bible didn't even have a word for hom homosexual. And again, the word that is translated to sodomite, it's, I'm reading here, it's a composite of two Greek words, arseno, meaning male, and uh, coits, meaning bed, with the connotation of sexual intercourse. But when these two parts of the word are put together, the meaning is unclear. It may refer specifically to a man who has sex with another man, or it may be referring to a man who has sex with anyone outside of marriage, including possibly a woman. Think, for example, of the English word understand. It is composed of two words, under and stand, but its meaning does not relate either to the act of standing or being under something. So... I recognize that, like, on its surface, it kind of more or less sounds like they're condemning homosexuality. But when you recognize that these words are disputed, what they actually mean, it's not even totally clear if translating it as sodomite is correct, but it's just kind of the, the best we have right now. And furthermore, when we're talking about sodomites, again, in this context, we're talking about male prostitutes, abuse, or rape, not loving homosexual relationships. Well, now, the word for prostitute is a different word. I don't know my Greek very well. I I confess. Um, I, I can look up for you uh, the the word for for that. Um, I mean, I would love to send just send you this document because this is like I'm not. Uh, I've talked about this. Um, I've done like scripted content on this usually because I've had to do like a lot of research. Um, so you know it's your lucky day. You kind of you, you got me here on a a topic I'm not the absolute best at at discussing actually. Okay. Um, but first, I mean, go ahead. Corinthians six fifteen. Um, that's where it has the word prostitute in it. And let's see what the word for prostitute is. It is, um, dude. It. I. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know where you're going to like translate words or whatever. I know that the translation, whatever it's going to say, it's. It's. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the full context of how the Bible specifically is addressing this behavior. And we're looking at it from the context of the original Greek and what those words mean. So when we look at how it actually, like how th uh, these verses were written and, and what they were really getting at, when you apply the proper context, it's not about a loving homosexual relationship. Well, I would say Jesus himself said that marriage is for one man and one woman. And I can prove that. Okay. Go this is it. Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 1. I'm going to read you the whole context. Then Jesus left that place and went into the region of Judea, beyond the Jordan. Again, the crowds came to him, and he taught them, as was his custom. Some Pharisees came to test him. Hold on, wait. Him. It's Mark 10. Oh, divorce? The one it, on divorce? Yes, but it, you'll see where I'm going with this. Uh, some Pharisees came to test him. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? They inquired. What did Moses come into? He replied. They answered, Moses permitted a man to write his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away. And, that, and I listened to this. But Jesus told them, Moses wrote this commandment for you because of the hardness of your heart. However, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female, only two genders. Uh -huh. For this reason, a man will leave that his sucks, father and okay. mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. So uh -huh. they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Okay. And here it's yeah, saying. This is talking about marriage. This isn't even talking. Yes. Like, no, 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 this no, is no, talking no. about like the institution of marriage. See, Jesus is saying. Here's They're talking how about a certificate works. of divorce. A man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Not a woman will be united to her wife or a man will Hold be on. united to his That's wife. That's okay. That doesn't mean that Jesus didn't ha had a problem with homosexuality this is a huge stretch first of all second he's, of all we're talking about marriage. hold on second of all we're talking about the certificate of divorce and we're talking about the institution of marriage lastly the way that the bible recognizes marriage including in this context here is that um it's a unity between a man a woman and god that's the, how like how the biblical interpretation of marriage is. It's not just a unity between one man, one woman. It's a man, a woman, and God. 
So if we're going to apply these rigid standards, then you could technically, on a biblical level, you wouldn't even be in favor of atheists getting married. So this well, is a far cry from Jesus not approving of homosexuality when he's explaining, like, yes, generally speaking, back then in the ancient times, marriage was usually seen as one man and one woman. Sure. <laughs> I mean, in the, when we're talking about the institution of marriage, yeah. The, the thing is, is I, I have studied religions extensively, and I, I have researched homosexuality in the Bible, and it, it is a sin. But where? Like, you haven't, like, okay, um, even if, hold on, could I just really quickly say? Let's yes. just say that for the sake of argument, I conceded what you said here, that Jesus just said that they'll, they'll become one flesh and whatever. That still wouldn't actually mean that it was a sin to do otherwise. Well, if Jesus says one thing and you do another thing, that's this a isn't sin even a commandment. Is this is this is a this is not a commandment. He's talking about Moses writing a certificate of divorce. But he's defying marriage. The institution of marriage, maybe, which again was between one man, one woman, and God. So it's not yes. just one man and one woman. So are yes. you against atheists getting married too? Is it a sin but for atheists to get married? For a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Okay. Um, this is Therefore, what God has joined together. So yeah, it's a unity between a one I, man, I, one woman, and God. That's I, And I know it's not really that clear here if, in this verse, but if, generally if, speaking, that's how the Bible recognizes the institution of marriage. So if that's true, then would you say also that it is a sin for atheists to get married? If saying it is a sin for atheists to get married is what it takes to convince you that it is a sin for two people of the same gender who are to get married, then yes. So you would you would say that it is a sin for atheists to get married? Well, the Bible does say don't be yoked together with unbelievers. But what if they're both atheists? There's they're just a unity between a man and a woman, but God isn't involved. This, this is marriage described for Christians. Isn't that the biblical interpretation of marriage, which is what we're abiding by here when we're talking about homosexuality yes. also? Okay, so yes. if we're going to apply the same standards, then you would concede that atheists getting married to atheists is a sin? I just want to get that on record. No, I... I uh, okay, I'm, I'm getting confused. Um, There's okay. no way you studied this, dude. This is... No. This I is a far cry. Is that times, like cover to cover? Okay. Okay, that's that's fine. That's cool. Can I maybe send you this this article? You can you can look over. It's a PDF. Um, let, I don't know if I can like send it to you on Discord or something. But let, let, let me read you this. This is this is Romans chapter one. Um, for this reason, God gave them over to dishonorable passions. Yep, I know what Even this their is. Then woman exchanged natural yep. relations for unnatural Natural. Ones. See the key word there? Angry. See, hold on. See the key word there? Natural yes. relations. This is just like what I was saying earlier. We are talking about hedonism. We're talking about women who are naturally attracted to men giving that up and just fucking whatever's in their way. That is a far cry, again, from a consensual, loving, homosexual relationship. But, but Actually, if we want to apply this standard and what your natural attraction is or whatever, then it would, it would uh, um, be more of a sin for gay people not to be married because then but, they would have to be giving up their natural desires, right? But let's listen to how it describes it. It says, likewise, the men abandoned natural relations with women and burned with lust for one another men committed indecent acts with other men and it says likewise which means the women were doing the same thing with other women the pastor too. here who wrote this this thing is clarifying that says he's talking about heterosexual people who refused to acknowledge and glorify god began worshiping idols who were more interested in earthly pursuits than spiritual pursuits and gave up their natural innate passion for the opposite sex in an unbounded search for pleasure again we're talking about hedonism here it's so obvious like again now here's homosexuality in this context being used in a context of idolatry not a loving consensual homosexual relationship which is my claim the bible does not say two gay people consensually marrying each other as adults is a sin here here here's here's the thing uh in now I'm, go I'm going to quote Leviticus, but just before I do, 
I want to. I already you, know the Leviticus uh, verse, Christians, though, and I already okay. know where it comes from. Do you know where it comes from? The whole "you shall not lie with a man as with a woman" or whatever. First of all, Leviticus it was eighteen and twenty. Yeah, eighteen twenty-two. First of all, it was arguably uh, talking about pedophilia there. Second of all, this was from a cleansing ritual that was only for like these certain, I think, like priests or something to to abide by. This was about like sexual purity entirety, no, uh, no, entirely, no. not about just loving homosexual relationships. The the context of the verse is is showing uh, a group of people committing sin, sexual sins. And one of those sexual sins is men having sex with men, according to the Bible. That's what the Bible says. It says men with men, not men with boys. Men well, with men. I know what it says, okay? But I'm trying to look at the overall context. Because the Bible readers of today, the word abomination conjures up disgust, horror, evil. But to the ancient Hebrews, the word we translate as abomination simply meant unclean, taboo, or forbidden. Again, this plays into what I was saying. This is from a ritual uh, cleansing. I wish I could just find where the exact reference was. Hold on. Here, here's, here's it also the uses the word abomination in Leviticus 11 in reference to a long list of foods that the Israelites were forbidden to eat. Okay. These texts were... Oh, right here. Jack Rogers. I'm not sure who that is. Um, points out that these texts were concerned with ritual purity and were intended to distinguish Israel from its pagan neighbors. So, again, this is like a ritual type thing. This is not just like a consensual thing. Like it, it's there was not even a, a bib, there was not even a word for homosexuality in ancient times. Like there wasn't sure. even an understanding of how how like sexual orientation worked. So it, it just even that alone, I feel like just that fact alone is enough. To, to recognize that, like, it probably doesn't make sense to say that the Bible thinks that being gay well, is a sin. Well, then, then why... Raping has, someone anally is a sin. Maybe we can make that argument. Then, then why has the church said for hundreds and over a thousand years said homosexuality is a sin? I don't care. One. Two, that would be a, kind of an appeal to authority. Third of all, I don't even think that's true. I thought that it, it, doesn't the Pope now support gay marriage more or less? The like, current Pope, not the old. Okay, so what? So the current Pope. So it's moving along then. So if we want to appeal to the previous religious leaders, then why wouldn't we follow the current religious leaders that support homosexuality? I, I don't. You, you you don't follow the current religious leaders. You follow the holy book of your religion. I know, but you don't misinterpret your the holy book of your religion no, no, to no, no, no. I, I, fuel I, dislike of gay people. I, I don't I who said I, I dislike gay people? Not you necessarily. But people okay. use the Bible all the time to justify bigotry Here, towards here's gay the thing. people. I, I I see things in black and white and I can't see things in gray. And so when I read the Bible, I read it in black and white because I can't turn that off. Alright, well and I mean so I would just suggest clearly, maybe I would just suggest maybe trying to look a little bit more at the nuance of of what you're reading. I mean, I used to look at things really black and white also, but you know what? That's kind of, it kind of was a detriment for me. And uh, I don't know, it might help you. I, I would like to send this to you. Um, but yeah, hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. Um, okay. Yeah, just uh, study a little more, okay? Okay. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.